Right, what's, what's our icebreaker? <laughs> have you ever been able to keep a basil plant alive? I have not. No, in fact, no, not even, not even. In basil. fact, I have a dead basil plant right here. I, 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 actually, I actually like went to put basil on my dinner and I looked over at the basil that I'd like put in a jar next to the kitchen and it's, it's already dead. It's like two days old and it's already dead. So it's coriander yeah. for me. Cause I'm like, I don't, I think we have a basil plant outside, but I don't really use it. Mm. Um, but coriander yes. can't keep it alive. It's hard. Oh, this makes me feel better. Sarah, what's yours? <laughs> what do you kill? I like everything I touch. Um, I mean, plant wise. Uh, <laughs> but no, I bought a basil plant yesterday because I love just making pasta with just tomato sauce and basil. It's like my favorite thing at the moment. But um, I'm literally looking over at it. It's, it's dead already, but it's because I have Did you get it in Tesco? No, I got it in Aldi. Like it's all oh, yeah. there. They're not, they're not like made to stay alive. Yeah, I guess. They want you to but buy like, another one. But they come in soil? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let me get it. <laughs> that looks pretty good. Well, like, yeah, it's but alive. I got it yesterday. It's already wilting. It smells great, though. Yeah, it's broken the ice. <laughs> ice is broken. I just want to talk about basil for this whole thing. <laughs> Next question. This is all going <laughs> for song. What happens to us when we die? Um, <laughs> straight in. And go. <laughs> well, I mean... I come from a composting household. Um, so like we do become compost, which is great. Other than that, I would like the idea of haunting people. Mm. You know? That would be fun. I would, if, if I was given the opportunity to haunt people, even if it meant I had to stay around forever and never achieve, you know, peace, I think I'd choose to haunt people because I'm a bit chaotic. And it would suit me. I love the idea, except I think I would get bored. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody would talk to you. This is this thing that I've been um, learning about recently is like the way that um, plants and like trees and stuff interact with each other. And um, I watched this documentary about mushrooms. And it I've, was been, so I've been going to sleep listening to um, The Secret Life of Trees. I was listening to it and I must have fallen asleep before he um, uh, like gave me more information, but he was just like, and trees can feel pain. And I was like, what? <laughs> they, can, they can feel pain. Do you have bad dreams about it? Like trees being I mean, tortured? The idea of that they feel pain is a, bit, a big bummer, I think. Oh, I just want to talk about trees this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite flower? If you have one. It's wattle. Like oh, wattle and dog. Like, like they still. used to get um, huts out of it. Or yeah. still do. Like hay and... Um... I feel like the Irish word for wattle, like I feel like there's something lost in translation. Yeah. And it's so beautiful. Very beautiful. Did you see that it's also, um, this bit on a rooster is called a wattle as well? Oh, the, like the oh. yeah. I don't know about this bit, but definitely oh. this bit. That's got a name as well. Um, what's your favorite flower? Um, I'm highly allergic to flowers, so I have never gotten too close to one to really grow attached to it. Is that why you um, asked the question? Longing? Yeah, I'm trying to get take different people's favorite flowers so that when I'm asked, I have an answer can't go to botanical gardens or anything like that. It doesn't suit me at all. That's um, so but I, I like the colorful ones from afar. I mean, I'm not like stuffing my face into flowers all the time, but I'm still sad for you that you can't do that. I, I was never really a flower person. Like they're, they're fine. Mm. I like mm. plants, mm. greeny stuff. Um, so maybe like my favorite flower is a lily, but I only say that because like it's my mom's favorite flower. My mom's and, um, but there was one, I don't know if it was a flower or just a leaf, but I was in a friend's house and they'd gotten a new plant and they're like, smell it. And it smelled exactly like Coca-Cola. 
Oh, wow. I googled Coca-Cola plant and all that comes up as factories. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe it does flower, but it smells exactly like Coca-Cola and it's beautiful. Wow. Yeah. That's so I don't have anything weird in my tabs, do I? What's demo? Oh, demo. <laughs> Let's talk about your demos. Um, I was listening to your album today. I f- love it so much. Oh my god, it's so good. Oh my god. Thank you. Oh, we're so it's excited. Hot hot Sarah, it. right now. That's it. The red. Yeah. <gasps> Shit. I'm demos. Yep. Yes. Can we have a look? Oh my god. Also surrounded by great records, Mitski, Adrian. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful photo. And then we've got our little barcode. I love everything about it, genuinely. The barcode was a huge thing for me. I was like, there's a barcode on our record. (laughs) How exciting, how are you feeling? Oh my gosh, tell me about it. I was fine. I was like, this is actually a really calm thing to do. And now I'm terrified and really excited, but yeah, mainly terrified. People are actually going to hear the record now. Mm, and what if, what if they hate it? And what if um, we've left ourselves really vulnerable with all of these lyrics and feelings and then they're smashed or something? We also uh, have given ourselves a lot of work to do in terms of uh, like everything was chill. And then we're like, oh we have to post these <laughs> yeah oh you're so we have, you mean physically posting them yeah. yeah so we're meeting up later on today to kind of start wow i think i don't know if people are going to get them in time but uh we're going to try our hardest oh my god like you are packaging them into like special vinyl boxes yeah did you ever did you have to like you released yours last year did you have someone to do that for you yeah, because there was a distributor involved, I didn't have to. The most physical thing that I had to do was sign. Um, like 300 to sign. Um, and because you're a band, you all sign them? Yeah, and we have to be in the same place at the same time, which is like, yeah, that's, that's easy. But like, uh, you know, when you're in the same place at the same time, you're like, hey, we, maybe we should do some music instead of like, guys... You're going to have to be here for three hours and you're going to have to sign your name 300 times. <laughs> <laughs> have you been, I'm not going to ask how you've found quarantine because it's too grim of a question, but like, what have you found the life of a musician to have turned into now that there are no gigs? I don't hate it. I just, I just like love, I love having time alone and I love having like um, time to think about stuff. I can't, really complain I have days when I've absolutely lost my mind but I'm not like in this quarantine time I like I got a piano and I can like play piano I got all these books and I'm like I want to read all these books and I started painting and like I'm just like yeah and I'm kind of writing a little bit as well yeah as soon as I start thinking existentially or I start thinking about the future I just like I spiral but if I stay present I feel really good would you say you uh like in enjoy touring or dislike it enough that you're quite happy not to be doing it right now yes to both (laughs) I'm really I am really happy that I'm not touring right now because it just doesn't feel like the thing yeah it doesn't feel like the thing that is meant to be happening Mm. I think so fondly of all of the tours that that we have been doing though so like when it does happen I'll be happy but I'm not like, I wish I was on the road right now. How, how do you feel? It must be really different though for you because, oh, I don't know, because you've got the record coming out. It's like normally what you would be doing is like get on the road. It feels like um, we're doing something wrong because, you know, everybody tells you like, this is the method of what happens when you release an album. Mm. Release it, tour it to death and then you know, maybe go off and write and then bring out another album. Mm. And then, so we can't do that. So it's like, you're kind of, feels like we're kind of breaking the mold. Um, but we don't know if, <laughs> we don't know if uh, that's going to be a positive. I hope yeah. so. With touring, you know, I, I do miss it. We kind of have the benefit that the last tour we were on was like, pro- like felt like the best one to be on. Just, it just was really positive vibes. But, you know, 
with tours I always find like when it's good it's good but when it's bad it's pretty bad Mm. in terms of like you know when you're tired or you're you're eating badly but you're also just having the time of your life Mm. yeah did you have your like album tour yeah we had everything booked and ready to go and I think we had imagined it and envisioned it so clearly that now it feels like we've actually just like there's been a glitch in the universe and we've taken a different road and I'm imagining that somewhere we are doing those dates and somewhere we played South by Southwest and a label came and they you know brought us up in this big I don't know private jet or something that like the world is completely I would say a balloon they brought us up in a balloon like a hot air balloon (laughs) or just like yeah and be like look at this you own this now and it's like yeah, it's, like Charlie the America. Elevator. <laughs> well yeah we had everything planned out so much that now I'm like oh do we just wait and then it happens but I think everything is just going to be completely different at the end of this so I don't know in a weird way it's very exciting because this is the first year I've been alive where I genuinely think anything could happen there are no <laughs> limits and that's weirdly exciting yeah, that's cool. I love that. So you said that you got a piano within the time of quarantine, but were you already recording your new EP, which I adore, by the way? Thanks. It's amazing. It's really, really good. We got a sneak listen. It's really great. Yeah, I got a sneak listen of your record. Ooh. Um, <laughs> I had already recorded it, actually. But the way that it happened was um, we, we've been in it. We've had like our several different stages of lockdown and in our first stage of lockdown I was still allowed to visit my parents house and they have a piano like my piano that I grew up playing so I was practicing on that and then I went um, to this town called Castle Main which is where my friend Jono lives and we recorded the EP together and he has a beautiful piano as well so all of that happened on those two pianos and then I was just like missing having a piano and then Charlotte my manager she messaged me one day and she's like oh I know someone who's giving away a piano do you want to just like pay for the piano movers and you can get a piano in your bedroom on Friday and I was like sick oh yes wow. did you find when you were like making like I don't know about how old the songs that are on your debut album from last year mm. um but like with the the versions the piano versions that you have on the new ep like they're so different and they translate mm-hmm. so well in, into yeah, like I... standalone piano and it's like a completely it's almost like a completely different song but it mm-hmm. did you reimagine them because they were like you kind of toured them for so long were playing for them so long you're like i'm gonna i'm gonna try make them super different yeah yeah particularly a couple of them i'm like that you know that they're, they're like basic they're just like there's like three chords in a song and you, you play it like 150 times and I'm just like I know this exact form so exactly and like I just wanted it to feel like something again and so I yeah I don't even I don't even know what the process was but it was just um it was so nice to play to sit down and play them like differently and it's it's not to say that I don't like playing them with the band or like I don't like playing them live because I love it. But um, suddenly it was like such a private experience of like, if you take all of that away, like how does the song sound? Like, how does it feel? And it was yeah. not just like completely. Do you guys do that much with your songs? Like, do you ever reinvent or do the, I mean, there's always like, there's always like you do the gig that's like the stripped down version of the song, but. Um, um yeah we have we've done like acoustic versions but I don't think we've done it like so much so that we've like kind of made the song like super different I think maybe we we've done it with like maybe one song where you know the version that we have recorded and a version that you can find if you like dig into YouTube they are completely different Mm -hmm. um but we normally don't get the opportunity to do that and for the most part we're also like oh the (laughs) effort <laughs> of of having to like do it an acoustic version of our songs but it's probably something we should uh explore more I think yeah I was just gonna yeah. say like do you think once you release the record can you picture like in a year's time 
any of the songs like even any like do any of them kind of feel like that you could reinvent them or you feel like you can imagine a different life for some of the songs I think the reason that we haven't done it so far is because we love the energy of our live shows so much that we never really want to strip them back too much because we think the louder the better yeah when we're in our practice space we always end up doing like full-blown acapella versions of the song and then being like yeah that was amazing and then like clapping for ourselves and then moving on to actual practice oh my god (laughs) i want to hear that yeah (laughs) but like maybe in the future because they're like there probably won't be gigs for a while so we're we're gonna want to reimagine the songs and and deliver them in different ways so yeah i I see it happening i think the songs um i think it work strip back i'd say liffy could do really well because i think it's like such a there'll be such a juxtaposition is that am i using that word right um because it's so loud and brash but I, I I think it can be pulled back really well and 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 sound completely different but still good even though it's like a you know a drop d you know put all your pedals on type of song yeah but that's so I look forward to kind of doing that have an acapella version there's an acapella like brief oh, yeah. snippet of that on the yeah. album that we put on because we were singing it and we were like that is so beautiful. We should put that on the album. And then the producer was like, yeah, do you want to record it outside? And there's going to be birds and it'll be really nice. And we were like, my God, yeah, wow. So beautiful. And now it's on the album. I love that. (laughs) Because you have to have that, right? Like you get to this point with the record when it's like finished and you're just like, there's just fear. And you're like, I don't even know. I don't know about this anymore. I don't know how good it is. And it's like, you have to have, those memories where you're just like you remember how good it felt and how much you loved what you're doing it's so nice to remember moments like that usually you're very self-deprecating be like oh we're grand you know (laughs) but does that fear fade like as somebody who released their album last year does it get easier (laughs) because i'm terrified i don't listen to the album anymore (laughs) okay okay that's the truth it's uh it's like a transition period i feel like it's like the transition from that the very very intimate scenario of pouring your whole self into the record and then like closing that off and um completing it and it and you know have it's like this like breakup with the record where you you just hate it a little bit and you're just kind of like this is just an analogy that I'm making up right now and I'm like this sounds amazing you break up with the record (laughs) and you hate it and then um other people and then it has a new life and you have a new relationship with it and other people interact with it and you love it for everything that you did with it and everything that it brought out of you and everything that you learned from it this is how I feel and then like you just feel you like you like you have a stepping stone like you have this thing that you did and you know it it taught you so much and um then you're ready to do the next one I guess that's kind of how I feel I remember being really shook by and I don't know if you guys have this experience or if if you've had this post recording but being really shook by feeling that I hated my own album because I loved making it and I loved so many things pouring into it and then when it was finished I I just I was so hard on myself and I just felt really yeah nervous I guess that like that vulnerability that you're talking about earlier it's just like it's so vulnerable and yes it's just it feels dangerous and scary and then now I'm just like yeah no I love it yeah yeah I think listening to my own voice I kind of have to I have to be like it like not think that it's me because I'll just be like your voice is so beautiful though both of you what are you talking about you hear what other people don't hear or you think negatively of of certain parts of your voice that nobody Mm -hmm. else thinks negatively of yeah that is hot that's it's hard it's hard but I guess it's yeah I don't know I think your record sounds awesome I think you should be really proud of it yeah oh yeah like (laughs) for sure (laughs) yeah I was watching the um the music video before my with the two girls yeah 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 I just love it it's so oh my god it's so beautiful I when did you make that pre- lockdown no the two girls actually live together so once the initial lockdown uh, was eased slightly we were able to film it with like a very stripped down crew wow Um, so yeah it was really lucky 
Um, but when the director, uh, Kate, who we love, um, was like casting for the video, she was like, I need two people who live together and are quarantining together who are comfortable making it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> also, they live together, but they're not a couple. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Well, I mean, who knows now, you know? I'm convinced. They're definitely I'm, 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 I ship them hard anyway. Me too. <laughs> Strong chemistry. <laughs> and no, yeah, you live together in quarantine. I'm like, good luck to you. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Good dating now. Let's go. <laughs> we'll have to check in. Cool Queens bring people That's together, cool. you know? Oh my God, yeah. I love that. That should be your tagline. Oh. <laughs> But yeah, I tr- I do, I love the music video. I think it's so great. There's these moments in it, just like, um, you know that shot where they're sitting in the car and the hand just like, re- the hand, the hand like reaches over for the, the leg and you're just like, oh my God, that feel like that is, I just love it. It really captures like an intimacy that I've never seen on screen before. Absolutely. And I love like tiny glances that I'm like, oh my God, wow. Do you know what, now that you say that, um, have you guys seen the, what's it called? Is it Normal People? That Yeah. I haven't watched it, but... I, How have you not watched it? I know. I just, I don't know. You know when people tell you to watch something over and over again, you're like, no, yeah. I'm going to watch Warrior Nun. Yeah. <laughs> watching that. I do know that feeling. The reason, I, the reason I bring it up is because it's the only other thing that I visually would say is similar in that um, shots of hands and like shots of intimate yeah. that that I'm just realizing means so much for a camera to capture the the intimacy it's it's such a it's such a small thing that it's looking for and it is so huge and that's how that's how honestly that's how the music video made me feel so I'm such a yeah I'm such a fan of it I'm so glad that you guys got to make that in this weird weird time can I also just do a quick shout out to the internet connection at the moment? I've never been on a smoother Zoom call in my entire life and you're literally on the other side of the world. This I is am. amazing. I feel like the lag isn't even that bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like we're sitting face to face. It's like we've met in real life. <laughs> yeah, shout out to you guys for being part of this interview. So disclaimer, anyone who's watching, we've never met before. Um, we... Our we have mutual friends though we do we do i um you were in ireland playing like last year right you played all together now i didn't play, did you play, play workman's last year as well i played might have played workman's a year before oh which one yeah no i played workman's last year yeah uh, all our favorite spots and other yeah. voices other boy are you wearing the other voices t-shirt I want to go and put mine on. I kind of want to like pause the interview. Do it. <laughs> okay, wait. Do I have to put mine on? Do you know where yours is? I think so. No, I can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too stressed. That's okay. We can pretend. I went to Ireland twice. Once with the band, and we played all together now. And then, um, and that was amazing. And then, um, and then, yeah, I came back to go to Dingle in December. So cool. I just like, I, yeah, I loved it. I loved it. Oh my God. It was so cool. I was, um, I had no idea, like, you know, like being from where I am, I had no idea what Dingle was. I'd never heard of it in my life. And my manager, Charlotte, had seen other voices um, online before. And she was like, I really want to go there. It's like the dream. And then we got the offer. And she's like, we have to go to Dingle. And I was like, what the f- is Dingle? <laughs> <laughs> like we'll go of course amazing but like like a dingleberry <laughs> yeah <laughs> it doesn't exist where am I? um and it was obviously like the yeah it was so amazing oh my god i just love it i love island i'm like even i don't care i wouldn't care what you guys were saying i'd just be listening to your accents like in <laughs> absolute joy i'm like i love it you guys sound fun i wish we could hang i wish we were dingle right now but not too fun you know we're not the type oh. to be like shots no we're very like no thank you mm. we did shots the one time that we played in la we did shots because the shots I are didn't like do shots <laughs> did you not? i just recorded you trying to drink a shot for about 15 minutes it felt <laughs> like in the moment it felt like it was this full of tequila and i was like hey free please 
It was tequila. Awful. Oh my god. Yeah. I couldn't do it, but there's a video. It's a really long video because Pamela thought it would just be me like downing a shot, but it's me sipping it for like a long, long and time. every sip was just like just filming. I was yeah. just like, just do it. <laughs> where what? Where were you playing? It was where called was EPLA, right? It was like a, it's a school night, um, like Irish showcase night that we played with Soak actually, uh, and a few more yeah. Irish bands. Yeah, it was a great, great night. Remember traveling. <laughs> Remember? I want to be in Australia right now. I, that would be so fun. I would so love for you to come here. I'm sure you will. I can't wait for that. That's like, that's our like aim. I think that's our yeah, biggest definitely. aim. Yeah. Like I was even watching, I was watching your like a virgin video yesterday and I was like, oh my God, I want that so badly for us. <laughs> oh, it'd be so fun. I would just be love so fun. Uh, do you do that thing where you like plan what cover you would do if you, if anyone ever asked you to like cover song? We are so bad at choosing covers. There's oh my God, too yeah. many. It's my favorite. Too, too many cooks. You seem like you could just like bash them out like nothing. Yeah. I'll say and it's just like, oh, is this not a, <laughs> an originally a, original yeah. Andrew McMahon? <laughs> no, it's ABBA. But the, yeah. usually the ones we eventually agree on is like the right thing to do. But, yeah, but they're usually like 90s soundtrack songs. That's like all yeah. we can agree on doing. We're just like, let's do Six Months on the Richer because we all adore that song. 90s yeah. soundtrack songs are the only good songs that exist anyway. So there's no, there's <laughs> no be there. And on that, um, cause I heard on the grapevine that you guys are fans of the Jezebels, which yes. was really cool to hear because now I'm like, you should just cover a song by the Jezebels if you haven't that would be really cool I love I think it. Really like shake it up as well because like that's the Jezebels always have like a really kind of like heavy tom bass drum beat going on over this like really delicate piano in there amazing it sounds super cool yes but I, I met Hayley Mary after a gig in Dublin and there's a really cringy fangirl photo of me just being like I got my hair cut short because you got your hair cut short <laughs> there's a line in um in that song that you I don't know which one of you was singing this song in the music video with I roll you up and crack you open and it just the production in that moment and then the drums come in I was like that sounds like the Jezebels but like in <laughs> In the best way, like in you know, inspired, yeah. I also had re- I I wrote some I wrote notes. I haven't referred to any of them thus far, but I do have one point which just says wife swap question mark. But I mean, like if there was a music version of wife swap where we could just like trade lives completely, and you come to Ireland for a little bit, we go to Melbourne, and we just like live each other's lives. I love. What that. do you think? Yes. I feel like I get sunburn. You would. <laughs> you would. Were you meant to be in Ireland right now? Yes. Was there like- yes. My um, housemate slash best friend, her sister lives in God. Where does she live? I don't know. She's living in Ireland with her fiance and they were getting married last week, which didn't happen. They were meant to be married on Friday. And um, I was going to go over for that wedding and then also just play shows like the plan was that we were going to be in Europe um like July August and then I was going to come to Ireland and like just hang out which I was so excited for because when I was there at the end of last year I was just like I love Ireland so much like I just want to come back here and it felt really you know when you're just in a place and you feel like you're really meant to be there that's truly how I felt being in Ireland and I was like um not that sad to be leaving because i was like well i'll be back soon i'm coming back in six months it'll be sick i can't wait and then um i was wrong yeah Yeah. but i do love i i love it there so much you guys live in dublin yeah Yeah. i'm gonna do an australian accent it's not that hot i have been (laughs) watching home and away for a while (laughs) when you're ready you're primed yeah you got we could definitely do white swap nobody would even notice it's not that hard to do an Australian accent if you just try. I was watching a Muriel's wedding there the other day. He's a virus. Yeah. 
There we go. I, I'll so give I, you like 30... I, I drift out. I drift out. I'm not primed. I'm not primed. 35% of your pronunciation is Australian and the rest of it, I'm like offended that you think that I sound like that. But <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if you, if you embraced Kath and Kim, like the full lingo and all elements of yeah. the show, then you would be a flawless and iconic Australian. Sometimes me and my ma just look at each other and just go, look at my, look at my, look at my. <laughs> that's just like a thing that we have. Actually, that's one for me as well that's come back around. I kind of forgot that Kath and Kim existed and then in lockdown, I started watching it again. For me, it's probably Hugh Grant movies. Ooh, Just nice. All of them. But um, probably specifically, You've Got Mail, which I've watched close to 10 times since March. Babe, he's not in that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've never even seen You Got Mail. He definitely isn't in that movie. What am I That's thinking that. of then? Um, who's I'm thinking man? of Notting Hill. Notting Hill. There's kind of a similar like bookshop thread running t- through the both. Yeah, 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 yeah. Old school. But I've definitely school. watched You Got Mail more than Notting Hill. Yeah, well, I watched um, How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days again recently, mm. and it's great. I love it. Be good. Have you been watching Two Weeks Notice? That's probably my favorite Hugh Grant. Oh yeah, that's really good. Sandra Bullock, like she's so iconic. I feel like she's there's no one like her. No. There's no one like her. She's unreal. Do you guys write as a band? Like, is it, that's, I mean, that's an interesting thing to me because I am solitary in my writing most of the time. What's your, pro, what's your process? Music wise, it's like kind of all in. Um, lyrically, it is usually just one person taking that role at a time, whether it be myself or Sarah or in the future, any of us really. Mm. um because I guess yeah it is very personal you know Mm. you could kind of feel like you're on a you're on a wave and you just want to ride it um but that might change in future but I like that like way of doing things though because when you do ride that wave and then you write a song and then you kind of step away from it and then you come back and you're like whoa that was a mood and I kind of mm. like having that captured rather than it being like a really meticulously thought out thing of like, does this make sense structurally and dramatically and, you know, all the other things that you need to consider. It's kind of better when it's just captured. Yeah. Like I have done things in the past where like it was, I'd, I'd written certain parts of songs and other people have written other parts of the song. And sometimes that works really well. But then other times you're just like, I feel like we're not talking about the same thing. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I totally agree. Like, I don't want to write off co-written songs at all, but like, I feel like my, uh, or like even just lyrics. But I feel like like my preferred lyrics most of the time are something that is like a it's a one person train of thought, just because it's like so. And and I'm sure there's exceptions to that where there's like there are two people like who really understand that they're writing about the exact same thing and like bouncing off of each other and that is awesome. But I do just love I love yeah, like that watching someone and hearing someone go so deep into their mood and like bring it all out and just say all of the therapeutic shit they needed to say. And then I love that you guys just make the music together. Like that is I lo- oh, I, I just love that. I, w- to be a fly on the wall would be... <laughs> You'd get to know us really quickly if you're on that yeah. wall. <laughs> yeah, well, let's just do another Zoom. I mean, take me yeah. in. Take me to the studio. I'd love it. <laughs> we can do that. If you want to stay up all night, we're going to go sign 300 records this evening and you could just watch. You guys are fun. I want you to come here and hang and we can just oh. like... Come here! We could just have a beer. It'd be so nice. Okay, let's wrap it up and you can go and um, do your thing. And this was just so nice. I'm so glad that I got to end my day with you both because it was beautiful. It was so nice meeting you and chatting to you. It feels like we're old friends already. It does because you're Irish and you're so cool. It's just so easy. (laughs) I'm so excited for your record to come out. I hope that you guys get to celebrate that in a way that feels like joyful well i can't wait and congratulations congratulations you. to you too thanks. i can't wait to, I, i'm excited to get a physical copy thanks yeah likewise oh my god yeah vibe. <laughs>
Okay, have fun signing um, 7 million of those today. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good sleep and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Mwah. Bye. Bye.